This week on The Stampede. I think we're focused. I think we're hungry. But more than anything, we want to win. The SMU Mustangs continued their climb in 2010. I think our team's uh, a lot better this year than last year. And this team is hungry for even more success. How you handle the adversity comes with that something that the great teams have. Talent at every position, a program reaching maturity. The what people don't understand is not the Mustangs of the past. And some unfinished business all add up to one of the most highly anticipated seasons ever for the Ponies. Welcome to the Stampede, the story of the 2011 SMU Mustangs. The SMU Mustangs entered 2010, a team renewed. In Coach June Jones' third season on the Hilltop, the team won the CUSA West Division crown and earned its second bowl berth. We still have a bad taste in our mouth losing those last two games. We found a way to win our conference games and get to the conference championship, and that was a goal of ours. Drone for the shotgun, looking left. Firing that way, and oh, he got it over the defense to Aldrich Robinson at the 40. He breaks free. Aldrich to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, 10. Touchdown, SMU. You can set the foundation of what SMU can become. You know, we could take it back to what it was at one time. But this new Pony program is not one to rest on its laurels. We don't work too hard on summer, baby. Let's go. Hey, be this with the soul. We kind of learned from last year, really, all the mistakes we made. Win. Win. How you handle the adversity through every game comes with that something that the great teams have. Carolina and the handoff to Jonathan Williams. Simon Cherniak there, ball's loose. Picked up to Garrett Davis. Davis to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, SMU. That fires me up so much I had to hit this cup. It's not you know what the media says or what people write. It's what we say and what we do. Kyle going to take it himself right behind the center, pushes towards the goal line, no signal yet. Touchdown, SMU! With 18 starters returning and an influx of highly touted freshmen. We plan to not just get to the conference championship, we want to win this year. Play harder, play faster, out hit them. This year's team is the most talented group since the glory days of the Pony Express. Line right behind the quarterback, and he takes the handoff. He's going to the right edge at the five, driving through a tackler to the goal line. Touchdown, SMU! And it's a whole different mindset when they come back as guys that have won, have been to bowl games, have won bowl games. We came to Austin and, and a different, with a different mindset. You know, we got to get better, we got to get stronger, we got to get faster. The pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Shotgun Padron. Looking right, throwing that way, Darius Johnson, what a grab through traffic at the 47 of UCF. The optimism is unbounded. Oh, that has to be Sports Center top 10 <laughs> plays. The 2011 SMU Mustangs are ready. SMU is 
gonna win it in overtime. thing most people think about in a blistering Dallas summer is football. But to a core group of SMU Mustangs, football was all they thought about. After the season's over with, then they go into their off-season program, which is the weights and then spring practice and then the summer program. This was a summer that the most people stayed in terms of, you know, not going home and you know just trying to get the extra work in. I see that our work ethic in the off season was much much improved. I thought part of camp is growing together as as a unit. All the veteran guys are there. You know they they want to be there. In addition to the heavy conditioning work, the skilled players worked seven on seven against teams from other colleges. It built a lot of chemistry between us. You know just you know being able to trust your teammates. It was, a, it was an exciting time for us, uh, just to be back out there with all the guys. A lot of experience out there on the field that know how to play the game fast, so I think we're ready. Something feels different about this year. Uh, I know it's going to be fun, and I you know, can't wait to, to experience it. By early August, the wait was finally over. It was time for camp to start. The well, first thing that strikes me is how much better looking football team we are than we were last year, the year before, and certainly three years ago. It's not even close. They threw us right into it, you know, a fast tempo, you know, we gotta get stuff done, we wanna be a better team. Yeah, well, people don't understand, I mean, this is not the Mustangs of uh uh, of the past, June Jones just came and uh, turned this program around. We can compete with any team in the nation. Everybody's fighting for a spot. Everybody's trying to make their team better. The Ponies settled into an unrelenting schedule of practice, meetings, and game study. And the Coach Jones tradition, a new place to live. I want a unique uh, benefits of the players that here is that we actually do stay in the hotel. We stay at the Radisson down the street. Living in the hotel, it was, we keep them in a hotel, which again, that's June investing money in what's important, and that's the players. It, it was better, it's definitely better than most places because I heard, you know, most colleges they got to sleep in dorm rooms, which is terrible. The hotel's been treating us nice, you know, things have been convenient for us and different things of that nature. That's always a great experience. Um, I think it builds a lot of team camaraderie. Especially when you have a lot of veterans and a lot of younger guys. Then they're over here taping meetings, practice, treatments, lunch, taping meetings, practice, treatment, dinner, meetings, back to bed. And that's the way it is. Coach! Offensive guys, I want you guys just to feel a bit. A special new special teams coach was there to greet the players every morning. Grew up, you know, in a football family, and you know, obviously my father had a tremendous amount of influence on uh, on this program. The merciless routine of training camp was underway. A typical day for me was um, I'm, a, I'm an early bird, so I would usually get up about um, five. 515. Um, the guys need to get taped and be out in the field at 830. We start stretching and practice goes from 830 to about 1130. We practice in the morning, but by, you know, 1030, 1130 at the end of practice, it's uh, pretty draining. Uh. And then after that, go weights and meetings in the afternoon. And, uh, try and get in the weight room if you can. You got to find times to watch film. Then you have your other meetings, so. From there, you got, you got your nights to study and go eat and relax, so it works pretty well. The punishing Texas sun was breaking records in Dallas, with the city passing 100 degrees for 40 days straight. They've had a lot of two-a-days going on here in August, and it is hot out there. Temperatures outside have been crazy. But to this group of players, it was just another challenge. You know, a hundred plus, you know, for 
you know, the last, what, 50 days. It's part of the game. You're in Texas. I mean, everybody's sweating out there for each other. It's working hard, you know, that's just the mindset the coaches put in us. It's getting us uh, bigger, faster, stronger. We've been in this heat all summer, so. We got to wear them before we go out there. And then once I took them for so getting used to them during the heat. When good teams go against each other, you know, it's always going to be come to the fourth quarter, so they call it fourth quarter shape. This week and this week only. It doesn't matter who we played last week. It doesn't matter who we play this week. All that matters is what we do this week. It's this week and this week only. That's our motto for the year. Finally, school started and the once empty campus became alive with activity. It's always good to see people around campus, you know, just uh, talk to different people instead of your teammates. Sometimes it's a little bit of a distraction when you first start out, you know, now all of a sudden you've got your class schedule, it changes your routine. This meant it was time for these student athletes to hit the books as hard as the blocking sleds. We got a facility over in the stadium where uh, we got plenty of academic uh, advisors and tutors, uh, whatever we need. It got a little bit harder. Now you got to make sure you prioritize everything. You know, it's uh, school first. <laughs>
Not all sweat, hitting, and study for the Mustangs. The athletic department took the team out on a Sunday night for a relaxing night of fun. Well, we are up at the main event in Plano. We bring all of our athletes up, no matter what sport they play, try to get them away a little bit from uh, campus. We get caught up in our own teams a lot. So this is a great event for us to uh, uh, mingle out with other uh, student athlete populations on campus. Uh, and I'm glad it's all sports, which is really kind of nice. It's not just the football players. We're around each other enough. It's good to be it's good. It's good to be for everybody. Uh, it's great to release some stress, especially after two days, the first week of school. These kind of things are always helpful. They're always conducive to better relationships. Just having fun, playing pool, bowling, laser tag, just the whole nine. Just trying to enjoy some other things besides football. Um, I mean, it's something we all like to do, but to be out here and just have fun, uh, kind of a team camaraderie type deal, uh, just have fun out here. Cutting me right here, hold on. It's nice to come out uh, on a Sunday night and just relax with your friends. How about the roll your strike? The kids are having fun. You know, most of these southern kids don't bowl now. Anybody from the north, they know how to bowl because that's what you do in the wintertime up north. Oh, man. 25 practices, three days off. We deserve some type of fun. <laughs> so they come up here and kind of act like children. What, you know, they enjoy doing that sometimes. Back to business tomorrow. Straight a and right now, back in the office. Right now I'm about to enjoy this pizza. But the football team soon realized that the competitive spirit doesn't take the night well, the track off. girls challenged us to a friendly bowling competition. Hey, check it. We got this. We got more muscle than y'all anyway. Yeah, I mean, you can look at the score again, and I see a lot of zeros, and I see we're in double digits already, so that's what happened. We blew them out the water. They started cheating, and they started throwing on balls in the gutter and stuff, and that's how our, that's how our scores were low. <laughs> oh, we've been working hard. My legs is gone right now, so the only thing I can do is shoot pool. Time away from the game, you know, just to relax and have fun, you know, and then bond with each other, so. We'd only been the first week of school. Classes aren't too bad right now, so we want to get something that can kind of kick up the year, right? Everybody's about to start their season. This is really good that they see us, we see them. And I, I just enjoy being around them. They're just great kids. Then the players took another break for the annual SMU kickoff luncheon. Welcome to the SMU football kickoff luncheon. It's a chance for the kids to get out and see the support in the community. This is very important for us to show our young men who have been working hard two-a-days in this 100-plus degree heat. It's a great festival. You know, we, they talk to Coach Jones and kind of get an update on the team. Usually this is the first thing that uh, kind of says that training camp's coming to an end and now it's, uh, you know, time to get focused on the game. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2011 SMU Football Kickoff Luncheon. The Mustangs are relevant again in the nation in college football. After 25 years of not going to a bowl since the death penalty, June has taken us to two bowls in a row, to playing in the championship game last year. Coach, appreciate right. it. Richard, Good luck to you this season. Right. Good seeing you, Richard. Coach Steve Jones. The 2011 Mustangs maturity is showing in the preseason, and it starts with a committed band of leaders from within. Coach Jones told us something when he first got here. This is your team. You control this team. Um, so this year, you know, uh, a couple of guys put together 
um, a leadership council, which is for leading this team. You know, with any team that wins, uh, the bottom line is it's their team. I mean, it's the players, and they've got to take control of it. One, two, three, ten, ten. The coach is going to do so much, you got to also help yourself to get up there. Yeah, and that's the key on any anything you do team-wise, is the players got to take ownership in it. You got to do a lot of stuff yourself, you know, you got to get the extra hours of study uh, of film in, you got to study your playbook, you got to study the study that formation, so... Um, The ultimate goal is to win the Conference USA Championship. This year, we the players decided that our motto this year and uh, kind of the focus is this week and this week only. That's the only thing we're worried about right now is Texas A&M and uh, just put our focus within. Whether it's a bye week or whether we're playing somebody this week, it's just emphasizing that you know we really have to get out of it this week in order to get to where we want to be. So our, our, our vision and our goal for this year is to be conference championships, conference champions, not just Western champions, but conference USA champions, and have that bowl game up under our belt, have, win that bowl game. The senior class, you know, and you start with Kelvin Beecham and you, on, on offense and you start with Chris Banjo on defense, have done an amazing job of sitting down and really saying, hey, this is who we want to be as a football team. You know, there's a whole bunch of things that happen in a game that you as a coach try to prepare them for, but they have to take control and they have to do it, and that comes from within the team itself. And June, you know, recognizes, after having done this for so many years, that the best teams always are the teams that are that are run from within, that the players take over in the locker room, that they actually are the driving force behind everything that goes on because it's got to be, it's their game, it's their team. Kickoff luncheons and all the pomp and circumstance that surround a rising college football team are one thing. Practices in 100 plus heat, afternoons in the weight room, and watching tape are part of the game plan as well. But all of the pain and pleasure of being a high profile college athlete all come down to one thing. Game day.